Chara hand. Although she's been a teacher in her life, a lecturer, Lord, we just want to come and pray for her heart this morning and whatever you've laid in her heart. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will just see that which is in your heart, that you'll use Evodia this morning. So blessing and anointing as she speaks. And that you remind her of the right things and that you will just highlight the other things that needs to be said this morning. So we still believe as outside the rain is coming down, it does not return void. It accomplishes that which is sent for. And so we stand on the word that she's going to bring this day. The perfect, perfect word, yes. A boldness and that the fear does disappear. Peace into this heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Um, good morning, family. I just want to make a correction there. I'm not the president. <laughs> I'm a vice chairperson of the province. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I'm used to talking in front of healthcare workers and healthcare worker students. I am, um, this is my first in church, but I do trust the Lord to do what he intended to do today. Um, I don't even know what to think or say about the fact that it is uh, post-elections and uh, I don't know the emotions, the vibe in the house. <laughs> I don't know what the vibe is, but we must just live a thankful life. Thankful life despite the situations. Um, I, uh, I wanted to run away, but I came back from the back and I found Krista talking about the move. I don't know how much he told you, but uh, the move has been traumatic for me, both physically, psychologically, emotionally, and financially. And uh, just as I thought things are coming together, we were flooded. <laughs> uh, there was a leak from underneath the one bathroom. It went right down the stairs to the uh, bottom floor, and it we were wading in the water, wading. And uh, they just found that it's an old pipe. It's an old building. L let us be careful of old buildings, people. They might be beautiful and historical and whatever, but uh, the challenges are endless because uh, uh, everything is, has deteriorated. They found an old pipe and uh, they replaced it yesterday. Uh, that means that we didn't even have water <laughs> to dust ourselves, but uh, yeah. And uh, speaking of the move, I just want to thank our pastor. The time when we were homeless, the place was full of dust. Shannon came to help us to just find a way of putting things away. And um, the pastor gave us place to stay, and we lived comfortably in his home. <laughs> doing what we want when we want <laughs> and Shani preparing lovely meals for us we, we were really pampered we really appreciate it and it's something that I'm not taking lightly honestly uh, that is a, a exemplary leadership that a pastor would take me in me and my child in and make us as comfortable as possible so let us know stop Let's talk, stop talking about me. <laughs> Let's start talking about our father. Um, when Paul called me, I, uh, I just said yes, <laughs> without thinking. <laughs> and then I didn't even know what to talk about. And, and he spoke about um, the father's love. Because we are about to start with our uh, father's embrace. I think this is relevant. It's just the right time to prepare the hearts, to make us aware, all aware. We are aware. We do know the Father's love. But some of us are not living it. We are not experiencing it. We are not walking into it. We are not basking in it. We are not enjoying it. We are not aware of it, that even during times such as that I was going through, he still loves me. He's still there. As a matter of fact, he showed me a vision that, that night that it flooded. I was so disheartened and very low, and yet I was not bringing my emotions out. I tried to be as calm as possible because I was so angry at the contractor. I wanted to say nasty things, but the Lord made me shut up. <laughs> so when this guy left, 
and um, with the plumber, they left, and I went to bed, and I was just like, Lord, what is going on? And there are trees outside my bedroom window, which is something I love and appreciate because of the birds. Um, I was just staring out outside and, and asking God, why, why, why? Was it you who gave me this place, or is it me who gave myself the place and claimed that you gave it to me? What is this? Then I saw him on a white horse. Right there on the tree, at the tr just, just outside the window, like on the tree, so to speak. And that made me realize I'm not alone. He's always here because he loves me. He wants the best for me. And the enemy is trying to convince me that it was not God. Look at what your God did. He gave you something that is falling apart or whatever, whatever. But he was there. He wanted me to know that he's always there. He wasn't doing anything, but he looked fierce. So I knew that he was fighting whatever battle that I'm still going to face, or that the one that I was facing at the time. But he'll always be with us. He's always with us. I'm not sure. <laughs> To feel. Uh, so how do we know that he loves us? John 15, 12 says, I command you to love each other in the same way that I love you. you. We don't have love. Let us be clear about that. He's the one who gives us love to love others. So let us use that love. Let us not be selfish with that love because we did not pay anything for it. He paid for it. He paid so that we could have it. And with that, we have eternal life. So, uh, and then that was verse 12, verse 13 says, and here is how to measure it. The greatest love is shown when people lay down their lives for their friends. And that does not always mean death, physical death. It means dying to self, spiritually, making, seeing yourself as lesser or sacrificing what you feel like you deserve giving it to somebody else, doing it for somebody else. Let us reach out to one another like that, what, what the pastor did. That's why I call it exemplary leadership. It is servant leadership. In HCF, we call it servant leadership. He's being a servant. He's serving us as his congregation. And he cares about us. And then Romans 5.5 5 just confirmed what I said, that we don't have love. But he does, and he's the one who gives it. That scripture tells us that it was poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So let us use it because it's not for ourselves only. It is to give to others. You know, there's a prayer that Jesus was praying that uh, he, he was concerned about the sheep outside the fold. So that's how we can show love as Christians, reaching out to the sheep that is outside the fold so that they will come in to the fold. And then we have 2 Corinthians 5, 14 that says, whatever we do is because Christ's love urges us. His love makes us or helps us to do things that we might not be able to do on our own. So let us make use of that. Galatians 5, 22, we know it is um, the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, when Holy Spirit controls our lives, not controlling as, as in you know, forcing you into things, do, making you do things that you are not supposed to do or don't want to do, but in control because you give him permission to be in control of your life and there's nothing better than that. Absolutely nothing better than that. Because when he con controls your life, he will control it within the fruit of the spirit. And the first one is love. That's how we know that we are loved. Love, joy, peace, and suhanan san. And we, we cannot grow in those areas if we don't have Holy Spirit, if we don't submit to what he's saying that we must do. Obedience is key, but we're still going to talk about it. Let me not go ahead of myself. Uh, so, yeah. The one I'm, I'm very scared of, of losing is self-control, speaking of the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, amongst all of them, I'm afraid of losing self-control because when that happens... Somebody else takes control, and you can guess who, and he takes control of your life. So Ephesians 5.25 talks to husbands. It says they must, they must love their wives in the same way that Jesus 
loved the church. He gave his life for the church. So we want, God wants godly marriages. Godly marriages with men who knows who God is. Men who submit under God so that they can lead their family. So if you are getting married and you don't know Jesus, make an effort. Find out how and get to know Jesus, especially the men, because you are the one who's going to head that family. And you are the one who's going to lead that family. You are the one who's going to be an example to your sons and your daughters, showing them the image of God, the character of God, the love of God. Let them experience him through you in Jesus' name. 1 John 3.16 says, We know what real love is because Christ gave up his life for us. It's similar to John, the big John, <laughs> 316, that we know so well. And there's another scripture that's also similar to that, but it doesn't matter now. Um, so if he could give his son for us, isn't that extravagant love? Isn't that showing us just how much he loves us, that he would sacrifice, give up his son, and for Jesus to be obedient, to leave the throne, being God himself, and becoming a human being, so that he can identify with us, so that he can know us, so that he can minister to us through his death, through his um, resurrection. That is victory, and that is love. That is love. Without love, nobody can do that. Nobody, not even Jesus. But it was love that was pushing him to do that. Uh, 1 John 4, 7 says, Continue to love one another, for love comes from God. God is love. That is verse 8 of the same uh, scripture. And verse 18 says, Love expels fear. That is why I'm now able to stabilize and stand here. Because love expels fear. The fear that I had. The fear that I had was not of you. I'm not scared of you. I know you very well. I know you. I see you every Sunday that I'm here. But I was afraid because the word is not something to be taken lightly. The word is big. The word is a person. The word is God. And I, I, I was just like, Ooh, the word. But here I am because I know about the love. You know, our minds, we don't have the capacity to really understand love, the love of God. The love of God. Those who have experienced it say that it feels like liquid. It, it's liquid love. So it's like we're getting it by osmosis. <laughs> it's, it's just seeping into our, our souls, it's seeping into, our, into us, into our minds, into everything that we are, and making us whole. That love is healing. That love does so much, so many things. That's why I'm saying, as human beings, we don't have the capacity to really understand love, the love of God. We understand this, this one that we, we claim to know and, and have for one another. That's the one we, we actually understand. But the one that God gives us, the one that God filled us with, is very expansive. It cannot be measured. Uh, so we love each other because he loved us first. Mm. We, would, we wouldn't know how to love if he didn't love us first. So we learn from him. We are copycats. And that's what he wants. He wants us to be copycats of him. Everything we do, let's do it with him in mind. What would he have done in this situation? Then Malachi 1, 2, 1 verse 2. I have loved you deeply, says the Lord. <laughs> what a declaration. Guys, I'm such a, a dramatic, emotional person. Sometimes I cry. When I read the scriptures, I cry alone in my house. I, I would just melt and just, you know, sink into it. Sink into what the scripture says. Because I'm a visual person as well. Let us try to develop that for ourselves. Let us develop our vision, our imagination. Without that, you will just read. It will be just letters, letters in a book, you know. Swart of it, that's all. But with imagination, we will be able to see God for who he is through Jesus. And he wants us to know that. I think there's a scripture in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, somewhere there, or the other way around, that says that Holy Spirit 
digs deep into the things of God, into the secrets of God, and he reveals them to us. He's Jehovah Nigella. He's the one who revealed to, to, to Samuel. He was revealing things to Samuel that nobody else knew. So he reveals, he wants us to know. He wants us to grow in the relationship with him, grow deeper so that we know more about him. We know him better. You know when you know a person better, like I know Christo <laughs> and Lizette, I can fool around with them because I know them. I can have jokes with them. I can eat with them. I can relax with them. I can share scripture with them because I know them. But if you don't know God, you cannot have that healthy relationship with him. Let us learn to have that quiet time, that time where you focus on gaze in his eyes. They are saying those eyes are also liquid. They are saying that sometimes they are green, sometimes they are brown. I don't know what other color, but they are as beautiful and indescribable like he is, he is indescribable. How are you going to know him if you don't spend time with him? Whether it's 10, 20 minutes, I used to work and I had my grandchildren were still small. And you know, my type of work, you have to be there like 15 minutes before time. And I still, I must still drive them to the crutch, the whatever, because they were different ages. I would get up four o'clock and Holy Spirit is faithful. People, let us trust him. Let us believe in what he says he will do for us. I would get up four o'clock and because I was a new Christian back then, I was excited about the word. And I bought Bibles. I got like 11 Bibles in my house. Lots of different versions that I, that I have. I would eat the word. That time of the morning, it's dead quiet. You are very clear because you are well rested. It just goes in. Oh, my word. You find yourself howling and <laughs> crying. Not because you are hurting. The awe. The awe of the presence, because he comes. You will not have quiet time alone, never, ever. If you are intentional with it, he will be there. He will be there because he knows our hearts. He sees right through us. He knows even our tomorrows, and on our next week and next year and wherever. So he knows exactly who you are and what you're thinking, even as we're sitting right now. He knows. May he open your heart that you will receive what he has to offer. So, um, <laughs> John 13, 23, <laughs> you must forgive me, those who are not African speaking, I, I forget myself sometimes, but it happens. Um, uh, John 13, 23, it says the disciple that Jesus loved was sitting next to Jesus at the table. Remember, we were talking now about how do we know that we are loved? How do we know that he loves us? The love of the father. The disciple that he loved. It doesn't mean that he didn't love the others. But there must be something special about this disciple. That he, even himself, was saying that I'm the one that Jesus loves. Yeah. I'm sure about Peter, they were looking at him and saying, hey, this one is taking chances. But, <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that's his love. John 15, 9, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. And then there's an invitation. Remain in me. X melt somewhere. I melt. Rare. What more do we want? What is it that we want? If we are invited to remain in him, we are remaining in power. He is power. We are remaining in the almighty, the El Shaddai. <laughs> the beginning and the end, you are remaining in him. And we, we, there's so much that he has to offer. If we can learn, we can learn to remain in him. And then the prayer in John 17, 23, I'm going to refer to the causes that we are having in church based on this one. He says, I in them, I just grabbed it in the middle. I in them and you in me, all perfected into one. Then the world will know that you send me and will understand that you love me. <laughs> you know, knowledge that, will, that you will know, the world will know. It's one of the seven spirits of God. And understanding is also another 
of the seven spirits of God. Can you see how intense it is? How expansive it is? He, uh, th that, that perfected into one, perfected into one. It is when three things or one, two or more things come together and becomes one. And that can only happen with assistance. We cannot do that by ourselves. That is why we have these courses here in church. Please do yourself a favor. Register for one of them and see what it does for you. You can even repeat it if you didn't get it the first time. And ask other people because there are people who have done the courses. But don't just come to church every Sunday and go back home empty. These courses are going to help you open up inside so that you Getting the dirt out. There's a lot of filth in each one of us. We are carrying it. Jesus died to clean us out. But we live here. We are not there. We live here and we do and say things that makes us filthy. We experience things that makes us filthy. Let us not hide our filth. You know, truth is the one thing that can save you. Truth is the one thing that can help you grow in your Christian life, in your Christian walk that you will mature in your Christian work because you are open and truthful, open up. Nobody is perfect. Come to the cause, expose yourself. Let them see who you really are. But walk away with healing. Having started the root of, we of healing, the seed of healing, having been planted, then you can go ahead and work on it because these things are processes. Nothing is overnight. Nothing is, God is not a magician. We cannot compare him with ma ma magicians. Ooh, magician. He doesn't perform magic. He is God. Yeah. Even the magician was cre created by him. <laughs> so, yeah. Let us come to these courses. I'm not trying to, to force you into anything. Think for yourself. Look at where you are at in your walk with Christ. Because there are levels, there are stages. And for growth, you need watering. These courses, to me, are like watering. That's why I pushed myself to, to do them. Because, and, and every course reveals something else about me that I didn't know. Even Friday, we were having a, a session, a SOZO session. We are preparing for this Cape Town training. So we go through some of the stuff that is new to us um, as as Bloemfontein. So much is being revealed about me, myself, and I. <laughs> and it's not, we are not sozoing each other. We are going through the material that we are going to handle in Cape Town so that at least we have an idea of what we are going to, to be doing in Cape Town. But already, it's ministering. It's ministering to us. Friday, I was prayed for because it revealed something that I never even thought. Just them sitting there, the, the, the gateway people are way ahead of us. They, they've been sozoing for a while and they have the material and all that. The, one of them is reading and, and something is happening inside. I start feeling the heat here and I knew that the Holy Spirit was landing and he's now going to show something. Oh my word, what is it? <laughs> and he showed something I never even, you know, really thought Lulu knows she was there, and they prayed for me. Even the previous time, it revealed my son's relationship. Why have, do we have such a broken relationship? Arnold has tried to bring my son to, to, to <laughs> understand what's going on, but he's wild, wild like a wild cat, like a meerkat. But uh, I, I got to understand what's going on between us. And he's saying that somebody has toured us, somebody has bewitched us. That is what he believes, and I'm this evil mother. Mothers are evil, ne? Do we know that? <laughs> Our children see us as these horrible people. But we are loving. We love you guys, and we want the best for you. When we are pushing you, it's because we want a better, better future for you, a better life for you. But God revealed it at that Sozo meeting that, that we had there. God showed me exactly what is wrong between me and my son. And I tried to make contact, but he had blocked me. 
He blocked me because our children don't want N-O. The word N-O. They hate it. It must be yes, 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 all the time. A man of 43 years old still wanting his mother to be his provider. I'm not God. I'm Evodia. He needs to understand that, but he was not understanding that. But now that I know, my heart turned, God is amazing. He won't just show you something painful and leave you with it. My heart is tender towards him now. I, I asked his son, some of you know him, Isaiah. I asked him, where's your father? What's going on? And he told me that he changed his numbers. He didn't want me to get hold of him. <laughs> but he finally, yesterday, he made contact. I was so excited. But I didn't want him to, to know that I'm excited. So I'm thankful that God is working. God is working all the time. God is working all the time. There is no situation that God is just dumped there and left you to rot in it. Whether you know God or you don't. Even non-Christians. Because otherwise none of us would have become a Christian if that was not the case. He's working all of the time. He's God. And he has a plan for our lives. And the word says his plans for us is for good. Not for, for harm. He doesn't, he's not there to damage, to cause damage to us. Ooh, la, la. I still have time. So uh, that was about the Jesus prayer of perfection and understanding and knowledge. That's good what we We need those things in our lives. Yeah, we must work on them. Nothing will just fall into your lap. You must, the word says, work out your salvation. Now that you got it, now that my son paid for it, now it's your turn. Work it out. Work it out. Choose where you want to go. I love the fact that we are given a choice. We are not forced into anything. Our God is a gentle God. And he respects us. He loves us. He honors us. So John, uh, 1 John 4, 9, is, uh, like I said, there are lots of similar scriptures that, that says the same thing. God showed how much he loves us by sending his only son into the world so we might have eternal life through him. Imagine that eternal life. That, that's why I'm saying we must, we must develop our imagination, our vision. There's been a lot preached about vision here. If you still don't have a vision, work on it. It is still doable. So verse 10, verse 10 says, this is real love. It is not that we loved God but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Can you see God? Let us just see him, try to see him and the sacrifice that he had given. Those who are parents, imagine having to give up your child so that somebody else can have eternal life. So let us live thankful lives, remembering that. And I'm not saying that you must just walk around saying that all of the time. But remember, let us have moments of stopping, standing still and seeing his beauty, seeing his grace, his love, seeing his son on the cross. You know, if, if our understanding, our minds, our thoughts could completely perceive the cross, what happened with the cross, we would go crazy. We would all be in Oranya Hospital. Honestly, because it will make us realize the intensity of it. Yeah. So how do we love him back? We have heard that he loves us. And that's, those are not the only scriptures. There's a lot in the word. If you read the word, you will find these places where his love for you is confirmed. Uh, but uh, let us move on. Let's see how we can love him back. How, how can we say thank you? We love you too because you loved us first. So we can praise and worship is the first thing. Praise and worship is loving God. It's showing him that I love him. That is why it's strange when you turn and, and you see somebody during worship, and you are wondering, do they understand worship? Do they understand praise? So we need to, church cannot do it all for us. People, we need to bring our 50% and the church gives us the 50% so that we have 100. We can't just depend on coming on Sunday and sitting there and listening to someone standing here talking. 
I'm talking my revelation. Where's yours? What is your revelation? Every single word you read in the Bible has, carries a revelation for the person who's reading it. So I'm sharing mine. Share yours with someone. Mm. So praise and worship. Revelation 1, 5b says, All praise to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by shedding his blood for us. We are not slaves anymore. We are free. Freed by his blood. So we can praise him for that. Whenever you remember that, give him praise. Worship him. Psalm 92 two says, it is good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning. You know, <laughs> when you open your eyes in the morning and you look around, you check, obviously, we check the time first. It's the first thing we look at. Then we can declare our love and our gratitude that he looked after us and our families throughout the night, that we woke up, that he has provided for us, he has given us a job. Thank you, Lord, that I'm going to a job. There are how many people sitting on the street corners hoping for a job, and they end up in the evenings going back home empty-handed to, to, to families that are expectant. Let, let's think about such things and be grateful for what we have. We always want more and more and more. We are like spoiled brats. We want more for ourselves all of the time. I was looking at my clothes and I was thinking, Father, how did I gather so many clothes? And there are so many people who don't have. I do have a charity where I take clothes to, but I still find that I have a lot, a lot. Some are very old, you know, we, we like to cling to things. <laughs> because we think they are smart. So <laughs> let us learn to get rid of things. Give to others. Give to those who are in need. Um, so the other way of giving love back to him is giving cheerfully. Giving cheerfully with a happy heart, not moaning. Second uh, Corinthians 9, 7 tells us that uh, God loves a cheerful giver. But who do you give to? Give to the church. And it's not just money that you can give. Give yourself in service to the church. Give to the poor, the needy, the hungry. Give to your family. You'll find that we are big givers out there. But the challenges in the family is immense. And we are ignoring it because we want to be known to be givers out there. Let's start here in the, at home. Charity begins at home. And 1 John 4, 11, dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. That's also giving. We surely ought to love each other because he loved us that much. So number three of giving back, his love back, stop loving this evil world and all that it offers you. For then it shows that you don't have the love of the Father in you. That is your identity. If you love the world, we can identify you that you, you belong to the world. You don't have the love of the Father. It sounds harsh, but it's the truth. If, it doesn't mean that we must hate the world as such. But let God be first and the world last. Let God things be first. Let's put him first. Then we don't love the world because our focus is on him. John 13, 35 says, your, your love for one another will prove that you are my disciples. That is part of the identity that I was talking about. If we love each other, we will be known to be the disciples of God, the disciples of Jesus. So number four is focus. Three was identity, four is focus. First Timothy 1, verse 5, it, it says we must have a pure heart. I think I went ahead of myself with this one. We must have a pure heart, a clear conscience, and um, and sincere faith. A pure heart, a clear conscience, and sincere faith. That's the one about truth. That uh, we, if we lose that focus, we lose our vision, we lose control, and we lose ourselves to the enemy. So let us be aware of such. And then Philippians uh, 4, 8 also says, fix your thoughts 
on what is true and honorable and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and admirable or admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Fix your thoughts. Thoughts, we know that they are saying that the mind is a battlefield. If your thoughts are always negative, you see why we must fix our thoughts. We must be aware. And that scripture in, in Second Corinthians 10, is it 10? Is it first or second? Verse 10, uh, uh, chapter 10, verse 5, 4 and 5, where it says we're pulling down the strongholds. Speak that to your own mind, to your own thoughts. Let your thoughts obey Jesus. Come into submission to Jesus. Because our thoughts create. We think things that are negative, and we end up in those negative situations, or we cause it to happen to somebody else. And the enemy is ruling our thoughts. He's crouching on your shoulders. Imagine that. See that. I've heard a testimony of somebody who, who God gave him vision to see in the spirit. And he saw a man walking past him with a, a, a demon crouching on his shoulders with his fingers in. So when it says that your, our minds are blinded, it's reality. Life is spiritual. Let us learn to live spiritual lives. We are spirit beings. <laughs> who have souls and live in a body. If we can grasp that and understand that we are living in the spirit, we are spirit beings. He's crouching on your shoulders and he's telling you things. He's controlling what you do, what you think about me as I'm standing here. He's telling you right now negative things about me. He does that. And if we don't, you know, I was sharing at the Sozo on Friday that sometimes during worship, I would be mesmerized. And he would say something in my mind. He will bring a thought that distracts me. Then I lose the worship. I have to battle to get back into where I was, where I was. Because when I come here, my focus is him, nothing else. My focus is Jesus. And he distracts me, this enemy by bringing those thoughts. So let us speak to our minds. To our, we have the power to do that. They must submit to us and to Jesus. Yeah, you just rebuke the enemy and you submit to your father and lover of your soul, the one who has given you eternal life. So John 14, 21, it's a, we, we're talking now about number five, which is obedience. We are almost done. Obedience. John 14, 21, this is another way of us giving back to him. Those who obey my commandments are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my father will love them. And I will love them. And I will reveal myself to each one of them. What did I just say? He reveals himself to us. He wants to be with us. He wants us to know him. That you're not just talking in the air as if he's some theory. He's not a theory. He's a reality. So he reveals himself to us if we obey his commandments. Because that is proof of love. And again, the young people. If mommy says you must do this or that and you don't, did you hear this? Obedience is love. If you obey mommy, you're showing that you love her. If you obey daddy, you're showing that you love him. And you can't respect him if you don't love him. You can't respect mother if you don't love mother. It, it, it's a couple. They go together. You can't separate them. So listen. Try to listen. I've, just, I've already told you that parents are not evil. Parents want the best for you. Let us uh, grow knowing that. And then uh, 1 John 5, 3, loving God is keeping his commandment. Simple. Loving God is keeping his commandments. I can't say I love God if I don't keep his commandments. John 14, 15, and 23, if you love me, obey my commandment, commandments. Meaning that you must eat the word daily. Otherwise, you will not know those commandments. Eat the word daily so that you know what he expects from you. 
All those, verse 23 says, all those who love me will do what I say. My father will love them and we will come to them and live with them. Who does not want to live with them? <laughs> we all want to live with them. Because with them, we are victorious. We are overcomers. We are winners when we are with them. Then Deuteronomy 6 verse 5 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And I'm adding all your riches and poverty and all that you have. Don't keep anything from God. Giving to a poor person is giving to God. The word says so. Feeding a, a, a hungry person, giving a thirsty person water to drink, that is loving God. You're not just loving that person. You are portraying the love of God to that person. And in that way, you are loving God. Uh, love the Lord, Psalm 31, 23. Love the Lord, all you faithful ones. If you don't love him, you are not faithful. So we must love him to show our faithfulness towards him. And then number six, which I think is the last, do what's right. Yes, it is the last. Do what is right is the last way that I had here for loving him. Thank you, Jesus, for being in time on time. <laughs> Micah 6 verse 8, the Lord requires that we do what is right, that we love mercy and walk humbly with our God. We must love mercy, so we must be able to forgive other people, and we must be able to humble ourselves. That is a difficult thing, humility. It sounds easy, but it's not. Yeah, humility is a difficult one. But uh, God requires that we do that. And then Proverbs 10, verse 12, is also about forgiveness. It says, hatred stirs up quarrels, but love covers all offenses. Doesn't matter what they did to you, forgive them. Forgive them. You are releasing yourself, not them really. You are releasing yourself. And then Psalm 91, 14, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. Let our confidence be in his promises. That is a promise that he's making. Let us walk. Give it. Yeah. Verse 8. <laughs> With confidence. Because we know that he promises that. And then Matthew 5, 44. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Yeah. Um, Hebrews 13, 1, love one another with true Christian love. Love one another with true Christian love is the NLT. The, others are, uh, the other uh, uh, versions would say brotherly love. It's the same thing. And 1 Peter 4, 8, show each other deep love. Love covers a multitude of sins. It's a repetition of that one. And then first, uh, uh, Romans 13, 8, Pay all your debts except the debt of love. Always owe people love. But don't go and make skirt outside. <laughs> pay your debts. But this one you can never pay up. You continue to, to live it. And then let God be God. That is Leviticus 19, 18. Never seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone. But love your neighbors as yourself. I'm the Lord. You must obey all my laws. It goes hand in hand with Romans 12, 19. Dear friends, never avenge yourself. Leave, leave that to God, for it is written, I will take vengeance. I will repay those who deserve it, says the Lord. And that is it from Evodia this morning and what the Holy Spirit allowed me to share. Mm. I would just like for us to really immerse ourselves in the, the clip that is going to be played now. It's part of giving back his love. As he has loved us first, we are loving him back. And just let